Hi, my name is Calloway Cox with Timbermax North America. I'm here to show you a little bit about our Timbermax traction winch. We're on a pipeline job in West Virginia. So the idea of a traction winch is that it's strictly a traction assist. It's not a full winch assist machine. So, simple concept. There's a drum with 1,200 feet of cable. We have uh, varying sizes of winches right from one inch down to five eighths inch cable. One inch wedge, uh, 20 tons of pull, right up to or right down to uh, eight tons of pull. This side of the power pack, uh, essentially the the hoe that this winch is mounted on is strictly being used for its hydraulic flow. It's not actually being used as a hoe. Though within 30 minutes we can take the winch off as an attachment and you can put a bucket or a different attachment back on it and be back winching. So come take a look. We'll show you the inside of the slope machine. As you can see, there's no major modifications to the inside of the cab of your winch machine. The control module is mounted behind the seat with an on-off button, which is what we're going to hit right now. And now there's power to the winch module. So, we've turned on the power to the control module inside the cab and flipped the key switch on to get power. We're also going to set up this emergency stop button and pick up a remote control. We've turned the power onto the control module. We get our remote control and we are going to start the winch machine using the remote control, which is gonna allow us to set up the winch. So we simply turn the power on. These are engine off, engine on, and hold that down. We get a warning sign saying that the winch is gonna start and our slope machine is running. Now we have the winch um, base buried. We have our tie back straps, shackles. The vast majority of the weight of the winch uh, that your slope machine puts on the winch is absorbed into the ground. The boom stick sorry comes down on an angle and pulls directly on the ground. The tie back straps are simply to make sure the winch stays in place if there's any sort of recurrence or you're pulling on it sideways. The next step is, is we take a ground stake, which is attached to a key, uh, which is actually an alarm. We give this about 12 inches of slack, put it in the ground. You'd hammer this into the ground. So we've hammered our stake into the ground. This is a, a movement alarm. It's simply a keyed on a wire stake holds it in place. If there's any movement on our winch for any reason, this key gets popped out and an alarm goes off, not only in the slope machine's cab for the operator to know that an occurrence has happened out of his sight, but also a horn and a beacon is going off on the landing where your winch machine is. So our winch is set, uh, tie backs are set, and we have our stake with our movement alarm set. Now we're gonna use the remote control to start the winch machine and pull the cable out to the back of the side boom and get it hooked up and ready for winching. So we're using the remote, we're gonna start the winch machine. We get an alarm letting everyone in the area know it's gonna be starting. We're using the remote, it's a one man operation. Feed it out to the side boom and we hook it up. Now we're sitting in the side boom, taking a look at the control module on the slope side of the equation. Simple touch screen. Some of the most important things you can see are a rope counter, video inside the winch pointing back at your drum so you can know uh, at all times how it's coiling. Here's 
three biggest factors in winching are your downhill force, your holding force, which means when you're not moving, how much tension the winch is putting on you. Some considerations are breakout force when you're trenching. Uh, with lighter equipment such as marukas, your downhill force will have to be lighter and the uphill force uh, also will be much lighter. We have two different modes. One is simply uh, a tension mode where you can, meant for rental equipment, uh, for short stays on work sites where you can simply hook up to just about anything. Uh, it works and it functions uh, no problem and it works off a tension. The second is a much more complicated mode where we tie into your track pedal sensors or directional sensors on a dozer and we can give you an inch of rope uh, or a meter of rope at a time. It's 100% uh, up to the operator and it lets us control uh, or actually communicate to the winch or the operator that they're sliding instead of going down the hill at the right rate. So again, these are simply traction devices. Uh, they're not meant to fully suspend a piece of equipment on, but back to our screen. So again, we have an emergency stop uh, for the operator as well. On off button, which connects with your slope machine, which is, this is letting you, an alarm letting you know that the winch carrier is not running. So there's quite a bit of feedback that this uh, device gives. As you can see, we have two different antennas. One's a coax antenna and one's transmitting the video signal for the camera that's on the drum. There's also a potentiometer for simple, easy adjustment. Um, if you see, you turn it down, you change your tonnage, change it up. You can change all three uh, with a turn of the potentiometer button, or you can go into the screen and change what force you want. You can also isolate that by not reducing with the potentiometer. So when you spin your potentiometer, the uphill tonnage stays at 14 the whole time, which would be for, say, a challenging uh, uh, job. This winch is uh, a T14, which means it has 14 tons of pull. But we have winches that are 19 to 22 tons of pull as well, with a one-inch wedge cable for larger applications than side booms and uh, small 210, 240 hose. We can be, with the T20, we can winch uh, 336, DAT, uh, that, that size of machine. So, with a simple touch screen, it's uh, fairly easy. Where are we at here? We can change our winch setup. We have hour meters and stats. Uh, the manual for the winch, uh, operating safety, the maintenance manual, hydraulic diagrams, spare parts, everything is built right into the monitor so you're not trying to keep track of a bunch of spare parts manuals and that type of thing and operating manuals floating around as this uh, control module gets put in multiple units it's nice for anyone driving it to just flip through it and know exactly what they need to know. Power meters and stats, main hours, uh, load spectrum total, basically you can track everything you've done, how much load you've put on that winch for that day uh, main hours and reset also tells in this case they have six cable hours um, and they have 26 hours before wire rope maintenance and as you can see 496 hours before a gearbox oil change uh, it will also present an alarm when that hasn't happened so we're back in our control screen uh, we're not actually going to start it uh, right now, but we will show slightly after this. The, the next, you're set up, you're in your machine, and you're ready to go winching. The next function is, is we hit the test button, and what that does is over the course of five seconds, it slacks off the cable as well as tensions it again. And that's one to test how good your anchor is, but it's also to test that the machine is gonna stay on the slope. So if it's rained or you've moved from a position of excellent traction to somewhere that's much more slippery, 
you'd advance to that piece of the slope and then hit the test button again. You can do this as many times as you want during the day, uh, and it's an excellent idea to constantly check what your traction is. Operator is now going to perform the test function on the screen over the course of five seconds. We've tested our anchor, and if the side boom was actually on a steep slope, it would also test how well it was staying on the slope once you've released the winch. We have models up to 1,700 feet of cable, and in this case, this one has 1,187 of three-quarter inch rope. Directional changes are smooth, fast, and maintain constant tension on the rope. The tension can be adjusted according to the slope and what you need. The winch maintains constant tension. It doesn't create any slack for the machine to lose traction. swap machines, it's the same process in reverse. We take a remote control, slack the cable, and then I run. I'm here with Ben Wiggins from Western Mountain and asked him a few quick questions about how his experience with the Timmer Max is to date. They've had it on site for three days. So Ben, how does it compare to your previous experiences using two winch dozers to take care of your steep sections? Well, with the Timber Max, you already know that it, the capacity that it can hold and you're not over tension in your cable where with the, with the two dozers or three dozers, the rule of thumb was, you hook to a dozer, if you pull the dozer down the hill, you get another dozer until you pull them down the hill. So I think just that safety aspect of it really changing the way we do our industry. How has the safety changed, uh, or, or is it easy Is it easy to use, or has it been too, uh, too much information all at once? No, it's uh, very simple to use. I mean, with the touch screen in there, if you were to, to, to start sliding down the hill or whatever, you just turn your knob up just a little bit and we'll give you a little more tension so you don't slide down the hill.